and blessed day to you once again, people of God, is the revelator once again, and hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We meet once again in yet another presentation, another exclusive sermon presentation inside the Word of God. And I'm praying that the Spirit of the Almighty, the Most High, continues to inspire and influence the motivation of the Holy Spirit inside your life. Today, I want to talk about the heart and the heart, the heart and the heart, or the heart hearts, hearts that are made very stiff, hearts that are made stubborn, hearts that are not made very easy, and we are already in a generation that is stubborn, a generation that is arrogant, a generation that is not easy to convince. And as it was during the days of Noah, where the floods came and compassed the whole earth, and only Noah and his family survived, so was it during the days of Moses. Moses appears before a burning bush and for us to understand more how it was during the days of Moses and how relevant it was pertaining and concerning the heart and the hearts let's read the book of Exodus chapter 4 verse 21 and the Lord said unto Moses when you go return into Egypt, see that you do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. In Exodus chapter 7 verse 3, And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. In Exodus chapter 7 verse 13, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 14, And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened, he refused to let the people go. Now, the passages in scripture that I've just read here are at a later stage when the Lord has allowed and permitted and suffered it to be so, causing Pharaoh's heart to be hardened. But for us to understand why the Lord permitted such a thing for Pharaoh's heart to be so hardened, I went into scripture by the spirit of revelation. Why? Because I wanted to investigate why God would want to deliver the Israelites were trapped in Egypt out of the land of bondage and at the same time the same Lord hardens the opponent's heart who was none other than Pharaoh. So I went into scripture and went back before the Lord had hardened Pharaoh's heart to investigate this matter. And I went back to Exodus chapter 3, verse 3. And, the, and Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is, is continually burning, but not being consumed. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Draw not 
nearer put off thy shoes from your feet for the place where you stand is a holy ground moreover i said i'm the god of thy father the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob and moses hid his face his face for he was afraid to look upon god the lord god has appeared in a mysterious way in form of a burning bush that is not being consumed so that moses can get convinced that this is not a natural thing that is happening this is no ordinary man that is speaking behind the bush the bush is burning but it is not being consumed so that moses you may know that this is the almighty living god the almighty god of fire whose fire continues burning and remains quenching itself and the lord said i've surely seen the affliction of my people which are in egypt and i've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for i know their sorrows and i've come to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and to bring them up out of the land of bondage into a land which i promised them which will be the land of milk and flowing honey and unto the place of the canaanites and the hittites and the amorites and the pisites and the harvites and the Chepsites. now therefore behold the cry of the children of israel has come unto me and i've seen the oppression which has been brought upon them by the egyptians come now therefore i'll send you unto pharaoh that you may bring forth my people and that you may deliver the children of israel out of egypt and moses said unto pharaoh and moses said unto god rather who am i that i should go unto pharaoh god has just presented himself his plan his mission in motion what he expects moses to do remember i gave you earlier passages in three different categories to four different categories of scriptures where the lord is emphasizing on hardening pharaoh's heart but then i took you back to exodus 3 to do an investigation which gives us the reason and the proof and the evidence why god later hadn't father's heart so according to my investigation as i'm reading where this whole calling started of moses and the assignment that moses was given i learn and i realize that the one that was actually hardened was not pharaoh but it was moses and moses what you are being given as an assignment by the lord is also the assignment that you are going to face before pharaoh i hope someone is understanding what i'm saying here the same hardening of the heart that you are projecting that you are making manifest that you are presenting before the lord god is the same hardening of the heart that you are going to come across when you meet pharaoh moses you have already seen a burning bush moses you have already seen a burning bush that is burning but that bush is not being consumed but upon standing before the burning bush you are being given an assignment by a voice that is is inside the burning bush and upon being given an assignment by a voice that is inside the burning bush i thought that you're going to get shocked I thought that you're going to get confused. I thought that you're going to be mind blown, to be surprised, to be afraid of the burning bush that is burning, but it is not being consumed. And upon being given an assignment, you are still disputing with a bush that is burning. And upon disputing with a bush that is burning, you are not questioning the bush that is burning but not being consumed it means you are not shocked by the miracle you are lightening the miracle you are taking the miracle for granted had you not taken the miracle for granted you would have known that there is no way this can be an ordinary miracle but an extraordinary 
thing that is happening in your sight and this extraordinary thing that is happening in your sight moses before you can dispute with the bush that is burning and not being consumed you must be prepared at least to take the instructions that are being given by the bush that is burning and not being consumed but rather you are being hurt in your heart why are you being hurt in your heart moses moses is saying who am i that i should go unto pharaoh he's actually questioning the bush who am i why are you sending me why have you selected me of all those that you could assign why have you located me why why have you chosen me of all those that have got potential all these questions that moses is asking the bush that is burning and not being consumed are questions of lightening what is right in front of him and he said certainly i'll be with you and this shall be a token unto you that i have sent you this is the lord responding unto moses giving moses hope giving moses the courage but the motivation that he, moses is now being given by the lord this motivation is already coming after moses you have already seen a bush that is burning but not being consumed it means moses is so attent to the level that even after seeing a burning bush that is not being consumed still is not convinced that this is god speaking unto him why because had he been convinced that this was god speaking unto him he would have taken the assignment immediately without questioning a bush that is burning and not being consumed a bush that is burning and not being consumed is a mysterious thing this is an unusual thing moses before you can even question this bush that is burning and not being consumed before you can even question moses why is it that you are not reasoning inside your mind to question yourself how is it possible that such a miracle can be presented before me and a voice of an angel a voice of the lord god is projected out of that burning bush that is burning and not being consumed but moses is not even th thinking along those lines moses wants to know why is this bush that is burning and not being consumed and even assigning me why me of all the people you have been sent by the holy spirit you have been sent by jesus you have been sent by god all ye disciple to do the work of the lord but after being sent you are over reasoning after being sent you are questioning after being instructed you are not taking instructions you are just like moses who's standing in front of the burning bush and is not taking instructions according to the expectations of the voice that is speaking inside that burning bush when you have brought forth the people out of egypt you shall serve god upon this mountain the lord god further spoke unto moses inside the burning bush and moses said unto god behold when i come unto the children of israel and shall say unto them the god of your father has sent me unto you and they shall say unto me what is his name what shall i say unto them moses you are still concerned about the name of this god you are not concerned about the, the power behind this god that has already been made manifest in front of you what surprises me is that the power has been demonstrated in your sight you disciples so many times and after power has been demonstrated countless times nothing has moved you nothing has changed your hearts nothing has convinced you moses power has just been demonstrated in your presence power has been demonstrated in front of you and after power has been demonstrated nothing has moved you or nothing has convicted you to follow that voice you are still asking theories of theology you are still asking you are still questioning the presence of that god you are still questioning the name of that god you are still questioning theories that are not associated with the power that was made manifest what approached you was a burning push 
which is a supernatural dimension what has approached you child of god is not just enticing words what approached you is a level of authority that that is beyond just words but you're asking that same power what I, what shall i tell the people about you that has approached me seeing that you don't have a name why, why are you concerned by by just asking for the name why are you concerned with the name when such a god is beyond just introducing himself with the name he introduces himself with fire he introduces himself with the supernatural dimensions of miracles he introduces himself by tormenting demons he introduces himself in dimensions of exploding into supernatural dimensions and moses is rather preferring to be theoretical in asking questions that don't even pertain what he has seen instead of him going to confess what he has seen instead of him simply taking instructions and going to the israelites that are in bondage and explaining to them the power for god that he has seen he's asking for the name of that god instead of you explaining to other people the power that you have seen in the ascension room instead of you going out there and preaching the power that you have seen in the ascension room you are still rather revising and investigating if the calling upon the revelator is genuine your heart is so hardened to the level that even after power has been demonstrated you cannot be convinced and the lord god said i am that i am there is no such response do you know why moses is being given such a response by the almighty lord god it's because you are asking a, an insignificant and irrelevant question moses what you have seen here is more than a name it means what you have seen its name is called power you don't even need to ask for the name of god after what you have seen this is why the lord god is saying i am what i am you shall say unto them that i am sent me and moses in exodus chapter 4 verse 1 answered and said but behold they will not believe me why would they not believe you moses after you have seen such a great power after you have stood in the presence of an almighty god that is so magnificent that is so extraordinary why are you not believing that after standing in such a presence of such a god there is a power that is already associated with you the lord god appeared unto you but still you are disputing with him and the lord god said unto him what is that what is that that is in your hand and he said a road and he said cast it on the ground and moses cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and moses fled from the same road that he had uh, threw down which had became a serpent all this that the lord god is trying to do is trying to convince moses so that he can believe but still moses that was attained and the lord god said unto moses put forth thine hand and take it by the tail and he put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand again that they may believe that the lord god of your father the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob has appeared unto you go ahead still moses heart was attained and moses was told put your hand again into your bosom put your hand into your garment and moses put his hand into the garment and when he took out his hand it was now leprous like snow and he said put it back and his hand was restored again and it shall come to pass if they will not believe the voice of the first sign they will believe the voice of the later sign but still after all these signs that way being done by the lord god moses did not believe moses did not believe to the level that he he was now explaining to the lord god that i'm not eloquent i'm not fit to even be assigned in such a task i'm not the right person moses disputed with the lord his heart was so heartened to the level that the lord ended up calling aaron 
to become Moses' spokesperson. Child of God, I'm here this very day to preach the word, to address the word that lightens your heart so that you don't have a heart and a heart when the voice of the Almighty God is speaking upon your life, when the voice of the Lord is instructing you. I've been sent this very day by the voice that is above so that when the voice of the almighty god is assigning you you don't become hardened during noah's days they did not listen until the flood came and wiped many moses is being sent but he becomes so hard but the lord god does not forget how hard moses was and he hardens pharaoh's heart moses had to go to and fro for him to convince Pharaoh, why? Because he was facing the opponent who is exactly like himself. So many times when I read the scripture, I couldn't understand why the Lord God was hardening Pharaoh's heart. But until the Lord revealed the secret to me, how Moses was so hard to assign. All these disciples that are so hardened, I'm telling you, the Lord is going to be so hard. Why? Because you have been so hard when the revelator was sent unto you the lord is going to be so hard this is not a case this is the reality that i'm preaching unto you you can't expect the lord to be so light when you are so hard you can't expect the lord to be so easy when you are so difficult you can't expect the lord to be so calm when you are so complicated i've been sent unto those that are hearing the voice of the last days the voice of the last ministry these are the last days and as it was during the days of Moses, as it was during the days of Noah, when the floods came and they compassed the whole earth, I have been sent to warn you from being heartened inside your heart. Repent today and give your life to Jesus. In the name of Jesus.